Thank you, Chairperson. Um, so thanks also to the organizers for having me here. It's a very interesting workshop and first time visit to this nice castle, so I'm really enjoying it. Um, so in the next uh, 25 or maybe 30 minutes now, um, let me just uh, share with you some exciting ideas we had over the last uh, decade on uh, Johnson, Johnson Junctions uh, using triplet superconductors. So, so far on this conference on Monday and Tuesday, at least when, when, when uh, colleagues or speakers were talking about superconductors, they all meant uh, singlet superconductors. And when they, when they meant uh, triplet uh, components or triplet superconductors, they meant uh, induced triplet components. So I thought uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, why not to use real triplet superconductors? Uh, there are not many actually. Um, Swanson Routinet is one of the prototypes, so I'm in touch with Yoshi for more than 10 years to try to motivate him to, to do these experiments. So basically all what I'm showing, uh, we have predicted uh, um, over the last uh, 10 years or so, some of this stuff has been confirmed, but uh, not, too, not too many things. Maybe 10 or 20 percent have been confirmed. Yoshi is still working very hard, also other groups join now. Um, so uh, 90 percent I show you are predictions. So, uh, first of all, let me thank uh, various group members. Uh, Wei and Gaetano have been postdoc with me for, for a long time. Also, Philip was postdoc, and Damien and, and Tony uh, were students. Uh, Tony went now back to, to Vancouver. Uh, so, we teamed up with uh, Yoshi uh, all over the years. Uh, also, Teva No joined the team, as, as uh, uh, Yoshi has mentioned. And uh, many, many years ago, I did my postdoc with Manfred uh, at the ETH. Uh, we are still working on this. And also uh, with Mario and his team in Salerno, we did a few papers uh, who also got interested in, in, in this uh, topic. And this is under uh, some recent umbrella. Uh, uh, Stuttgart teamed up with uh, UBC in Vancouver and also uh, University of Tokyo recently founded in April a new Max Planck Center for quantum materials. And uh, so uh, I forgot to make any advertisement, but if you're interested to join and to team up with us on, on this uh, nice interface physics, uh, we have uh, open positions there. So I can guess I can make the motivation rather short because Yoshi in his tutorial gave a nice uh, introduction to uh, uh, the uh, physics of Swanson routinate or to triplet superconductors. Let me just remind you uh, from your, your basically BCS lecture uh, that uh, you're dealing with a scalar here in, the, in, in terms of spin, in, in the case of spin singlet. However, if you uh, uh, go to spin triplet pairing, uh, what uh, our chairperson yesterday called uh, spin momentum locking uh, sets in. Uh, this is in this uh, interface physics. Uh, in, in this language, uh, we are dealing uh, with a, a D vector and we have various uh, uh, possibilities here and uh, it's a long story, it would be an extra talk to explain the physics of Swanson Routinate. Uh, Yoshi has already done this and um, so let me uh, uh, jump more into the, our predictions we made. Uh, one of my favorite predictions is uh, uh, this Joss's junctions here. Uh, I call this uh, TFT uh, for triplet, ferromagnet triplet. So I will use S not for singlet, uh, not for superconductor, but for singlet now. So SFS means in my language singlet, ferromagnet superconductor singlet, and TFT means triplet uh, superconductor. And um, well, you see, this was the first paper uh, I did here was two <laughs> 2006 already, uh, many years ago. And um, at that time, uh, we had a hard time to publish this paper because we call this novel, novel Josephson effect. And, and the, the editor of PRL, of course, they don't like the word novel, in particular in the title or so. But we didn't know how to call it. Uh, so uh, finally, we had an appeal and went through. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, we tried to motivate many groups to, to measure this. Um, ten years later, basically, uh, uh, we have half of the junction. We have interface physics, what Yoshi has pointed out. But there are various ideas to, to uh, extend this uh, to, uh, to a real junctions, actually. There are also some questions here. So let me, let me share with you some exciting uh, insights what this junction can do. And uh, I will also uh, contrast this a little bit with other junctions uh, uh, we, we calculated uh, recently. And um, well, uh, because this conference is focusing on interface effects, let me also spend a few minutes uh, 
uh, what are particular problems uh, why this has not been fabricated so far and, and uh, what do we understand and what do we not understand actually and finally I give some uh, review a little bit at least uh, what are the status of thin films for example in, in this uh, community and um, so let me just uh, start with a theory reminder instead of a scalar now uh, for triplet superconductors uh, we want to deal not with induced components, we want to deal with the real uh, uh, material and instead of a scalar this is now a, a vector and uh, uh, we call this equal spin pairing if this guy here points along uh, the same axis for all momenta. So in, in, in a nutshell uh, the, the Cooper pairs are in plane and uh, uh, sometimes people point out the, the similarity with helium-3 physics but actually these, these states here in, in, in uh, uh, this is probably a counter example it's not, uh, it's not chiral state but we want to do we want to deal with these chiral state this is the material we have in mind uh, for strons and rutinate. Um, to be honest um, I would be happy if also more triplet superconductors would be discovered uh, because the theory is, is more or less general basically uh, of course maybe details may differ the orbitals or so but uh, if there would be a high TC a triplet superconductor with 50 Kelvin or so I would appreciate this a lot because it would be much easier maybe then to, to fabricate these junctions at the moment 1.5 Kelvin uh, is high TC in triplet case uh, there are more uh, candidates like ruthenium based and so on but no one wants to work with them they are also difficult uh, phase diagrams and they have lower TC even than 1.5 Kelvin so this is the material we have in mind so uh, um, when we started this of course uh, it's, it's uh, uh, um, attempting to, to look into uh, uh, spin currents to look into a new degrees of freedom uh, charge and spin interplay and in the beginning I will show you some, some uh, results here uh, uh, which, are, which can be understood with simple let's say Google of the Gen or, or tunneling uh, theory then I switch more to complicated problems in the second part so um, here is the, the junction uh, I would like to consider for a moment for, for simplicity let's, let's take this a one dimensional problem and make this guy here in the middle very very thin and uh, in this case if you have on both sides um, the same material uh, basically you can write down uh, a Bogolyov de Gen equation or whatever formalism you like and it's a little bit complicated uh, to solve but even with some tricks you can do this with Mathematica finally uh, to solve this uh, it's a little bit complicated uh, but, but that's basically it so what we want to have is uh, we have a d-vector now on both sides that's the important point we have d-vectors left and right hand side and uh, in between we have another vector which is the magnetization and if you want to include roughness you can also put some potential here of course you have a phase a gradient a phase a difference between the two uh, superconductors as usual and uh, sometimes the orbitals uh, do matter uh, with respect to the interface uh, because Andreev process will be different so sometimes this is a complication for such routinate we cannot avoid but finally uh, we have to live with this uh, in real life now of course uh, you can ask immediately uh, how to manipulate all these angles here uh, between D and M and so on and uh, the honest answer we don't know exactly how to do this this is more a challenge for experimentalists uh, for example you do some field cooling experiments or thickness experiments or one idea which immediately uh, popped up uh, if you want to have a non-aligned d-vector you use a different substrate here which you can buy with a different angle and uh, this helps a lot to bring these guys uh, not aligned uh, simply speaking uh, if this not aligned then the cross product here is, is non-zero which simply means uh, uh, you have some uh, this is basically like, like a I dot s so it's like a spin induced uh, uh, um, <laughs> spin induced by the gradient in, in spin space basically gives also the spin current so this is similar if you are expert let's say multiferroic physics or so they have this Jaroszynski Moria s cross s which is a polarization here it's d cross d this gives a spin this is basically the whole uh, secret of the junction we would like to consider uh, however there are many more and more uh, things to discover here so um, all over the years we have used various methods and um, so it's, uh, you can do simple tunneling uh, uh, Hamiltonian so symmetry arguments Bully of the Gen or if you uh, uh, like our chairman <laughs> or organizers you can work with uh, Eilenberger equation Green's functions this is still quasi classical of course 
and uh, calculate charge and spin current and so on uh, in, this, in different geometries, if you like. So let me show you some results before I go to more uh, interface effects. Uh, the first thing the referee wants to know or the, the uh, experimentalist would like to know is the current phase relation. And in the simple case, if the d vectors are now parallel, if they're now aligned, we just have, we just have the angle here of the angle here of the magnetization that is changing. And uh, here are some examples from uh, uh, um, perpendicular to, to parallel. And you see at some critical angle here, uh, there is a change uh, 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 which, uh, which is well known as a zero pi transition. And uh, remember, remember in SFS junction, this is a function of thickness basically where this happens. But uh, uh, this was predicted in, in the 70s, took many, many years to, to be measured actually. Uh, but here's a function of orientation actually. And we call this a little bit universal, it should be in quotation marks, because it doesn't depend on the details of the bound states or so, just depend on free energy arguments that this uh, 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 should depend orientation. And this already was a hint uh, very early uh, that maybe also spin currents may be involved. Um, time is flying already, so let me spend uh, just a couple of seconds here on, on this uh, zero pi transition uh, which we see here. Uh, um, you can compare different methods. In Boulle of the Gen, for example, you see uh, all, the, all the bound states, while in tunneling theory you just have symmetry arguments. And uh, well, however, in real life, uh, the, these uh, orbital uh, states, they do matter now because of the Andreev. Andreev scattering is different in this case, in this case, for example. So you can work this out and compare different methods. In particular, if M is large here in the, in the, in the tunneling regime, you can calculate critical angle as a function of temperature. And depending on uh, uh, the details of the bound states, which are not present in all methods, and um, depending on the orbital physics that happens at the interface, uh, we will have different temperature dependence. That's for theoreticians maybe a little detail, but in practice it will matter. In particular, uh, we have seen uh, from Yoshi's talk that also the interface may do maybe not behave as the bulk. So if the interface does does something else, maybe if there's an orbital reconstruction or the d vector is pointing in a different direction, and in, in experiments they even hints that two layers are doing something different, so there's some reconstruction uh, for two layers, then these details will matter in experiment. But this has not been done so far, so this is still uh, a simple prediction, but we need to uh, wait for the experiments actually. So uh, also uh, uh, colleagues in, in Kyoto ask us again about the thickness. Uh, in, in the simplest version, the thickness doesn't matter too much because uh, once the wave function meet uh, from the two superconductors, it's like textbook actually, then you have uh, Josephson effect, so roughness and so on should not matter too much. However, uh, uh, we know that we are not always in one regime, so the, the thickness may matter. And I uh, do this very, very quick here because this is more realistic calculation in, in two and three dimensions. You can reproduce this. This was a thesis of uh, Damien Terrat and uh, uh, you can have zero pi transitions uh, depending on the thickness uh, versus the strength of the uh, 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 ferromagnet. There can be some alternating uh, phase, so it can be more complicated in real life once the thickness is not so really much under control, actually. That's the message, but uh, experiments will, will tell us how this works. Okay, so let's uh, come to uh, spin uh, currents in this junction. This is of course very tempting to look into this because we have now uh, a uh, tunneling of, of, of real uh, Cooper pairs with, with equal spin pairing. And uh, so this also is one of the uh, first mechanism that uh, uh, not only we, also other people have calculated. What I find in particular exciting is, is the spin current due to uh, a D vector misalignment. So if the D cross D is non-zero, you basically induce some uh, gradient in spin space which, re which results in a, in a spin current. And uh, this you can basically fabricate, we hope, once this is done. And of course, uh, f uh, there's a third mechanism. This guy can act as a filter. And uh, well, this can be easily calculated in, in, in with various methods. So here's just a cartoon version of the first uh, mechanism. So while you're tunneling, you flip and you pick up a phase, a pi, and also you pick up alpha from, from the magnetization. And if you do this correctly, you also have to calculate uh, uh, this event while you pick basically up uh, some orbital uh, character, which uh, can be complicated in real life, but uh, calculation, calculation is easy. 
So here a little bit more about the spin uh, uh, um, a current which we have calculated. Uh, so this is the upper half is calculation and the lower part is basically cartoon. So what we see is the charge current for comparison and the spin current and we decompose it here in up and down channels. This is a bit uh, pedagogically way. You can also think about left and right movers, but that's a bit too simple. But you see uh, uh, they, they uh, cancel actually for spin current while you have the usual charge current if these guys are parallel and nothing strange happens, no phase difference is in use. However, if these guys are non-parallel, non then basically you, you shift these guys here. You shift, you introduce another phase difference uh, eta in this case. So you immediately uh, generate uh, a, a, a spin current. Uh, this is the Y component that is shown here. So this is also uh, Scalapino, I think, have predicted this in the 80s or so, but never had in mind uh, that this works also for, for, for real materials. And if we have sort of some filter in between here, then uh, also this gets more complicated. So you can have maybe special situations also for the charge current in which you say, hey, wait a minute, this is non-zero non for, for zero phase. So this guy must be crazy because there's some Joseph's effect without phase difference. But remember, there's an induced phase uh, difference here from the, from the uh, D vectors, actually. So this can have uh, interesting effects, I think, if you would combine this. So how does those depend on the yes, so the D vector, so in this case it's only shift of the D vector, so you get a, get a shift here, and this is a, you know, you see up and down are shifted, yeah, but now you have also extra filter, and then this is more on the charge channel act, it's more on the charge, well this guy is hardly changed actually, this is more on the charge channel. So, um, we have more, so you can say so far so good. Now you just wait for, for, for measurements or so. But there, there are more exciting uh, uh, properties of the junction. For example, uh, uh, this junction in, is in the so-called fractional state. And um, in the beginning I thought this is just playing with, with, playing with some uh, uh, free energy landscape. But uh, I, I, uh, I was wrong, actually, because people told me in, 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 in uh, various fields of quantum computing or so, you want to have some phi junction where you can tune the minima uh, to a minimum you like. So just uh, take the Ginzburg-Landau perspective. You took the free energy uh, uh, calculation of the Josephson current uh, uh, versus, versus phi phase difference. Uh, usually it's at zero, as I've shown you, if M is not important. But at some point, if, 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 if M is switched on, you can have degenerate uh, uh, states uh, in, in, in M, but you have different uh, minima in phi, which is basically you can tune any value you like, actually. That's the point. And uh, in real life, this could be manifested. This was an idea of Manfred. If you have a pin flux line here, and just calculate the uh, 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 Cauchy contour integral. There's also, from the minimum of the phase, there's an extra contribution here. And this would be very cool to see some kind of, of extra contribution to the flux, actually, uh, which has never been seen, I think. But it's, it's, it's possible because of the d cross d is non-zero. Uh, it should be possible to see some kind of uh, uh, you know, two domains, if you wish. In simple words, these are two domains. And if you plug flux line in between, they should have this property. Now, um, over the years, also referees have asked us, uh, while this is not possible, uh, what happens if this guy is non-magnetic here? And then we have the usual uh, 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 um, junction in, in the sense that the d cross d is still non-zero, but cannot couple to the spin degrees of freedom. But we had an idea if this guy is in between, is, is uh, almost magnetic, almost magnetic, uh, we can ask the question, is this uh, possible to induce the, the last uh, kick to make it magnetic? And uh, we had to go beyond this quasi classical theory and, and of, I wouldn't tell you if the answer is yes. So basically if the D vectors are null aligned, then uh, you can uh, 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 give an extra uh, contribution to the free energy, which is shown here. So remember, this is the electronic part of the Josephson uh, current, the charge current, and this is the, uh, now an extra term from the, uh, from the magnetic part. And if you know, this is the susceptibility, and if this is guys large, uh, this helps in the competition between the cross product here and, and the scalar product. And uh, so if you just analyze the free energy, and if these coefficients can be large, larger than this, then free energy is shifted, actually. So it, there is a way of, you know, functional interface physics, if you wish, 
uh, but no one has seen this actually. But it's possible uh, with this gradient in spin space to, to do something more, I think, than just be happy about the spin current or so. So somehow you can manipulate the interface. Uh, this, who knows what, what this can, can bring up in, in real life. So just to finish this uh, part, uh, of course, we have studied many, many more junctions, actually. Uh, uh, you have seen, uh, uh, we have interface already uh, done by Yoshi Maeno and, and his team from triplet and ferromagnet superconductors. So why not, to put a, why not to put something on top, maybe niobium or so? This is uh, maybe realistic to do. So we have a few papers on this, but I don't go too much into detail because all the nice D cross D physics is gone because there's only one D vector. That's uh, unfortunately the case. So many things just depend on the difference of these angles now. Uh, so basically alpha between D and M, this is sets up this, uh, this game. So we have pair breaking effects. We have high harmonics similar to, to uh, your presentation. We have high harmonics in the deviation from synodial and so on. These are maybe details and should be measured, but not the full glory, I think, of the, of the D cross D uh, physics. Now, uh, finally, uh, the last junction, uh, which I find very exciting, is a junction that has, that has on one side uh, a non centrosymmetric superconductor. This is something uh, exciting because uh, we, in interface physics, we are dealing with, with this symmetry broken state, which can induce a loss of parity, which means you have also triplet component just by the interface. This is in a bulk system. So in bulk materials, where center of inversion is missing, uh, you usually believe there's a joloshinsky maria interaction, these guys get multiferoric and so on, but sometimes they also become superconducting, and there are about 20 to 30 materials who have these properties. Unfortunately, these are sometimes heavy fermion-based, uh, F electrons, difficult to handle, but, uh, but physics is, I think, clear. So in this case, it's the uh, inversion along, along the z-axis. So what happens then, uh, there's, of course, uh, if center of inversion is missing, there's a, a strong rush bar coupling. So this is a little bit different to all this, we have so far in this conference only LS coupling have seen, and relativistic effects can be important, we have seen this already, but if it's rush bar, then uh, we have one more information. If rush bar is active, we have a lifting of the Kramer's degeneracy of this anti-symmetric spring orbit coupling. So in simple words, what happens, one Fermi surface, which is just a cartoon here, it's a, it's a circle, splits into two, and uh, on one Fermi surface, we have a singlet plus triplet. On the other, we have singlet minus triplet. And uh, under some realistic conditions here, uh, where the D vector is, uh, in most of the cases, parallel to the spin orbit vector, we have something like S plus P or S minus P physics. And of course, this has consequences. It's already measured in thermodynamic properties. The ratio, by the, by the way, is not really known for all the superconductors. It's hard to measure. And we had some ideas on this in these review articles. But nevertheless, yes? How long is the time reversal symmetry is conserved? Sorry. Time yes, it's conserved. Yes, so how is the time reversal symmetry? Because of the cross product, actually. Because of the cross product. So this is like a strong, spin, uh, very strong sp uh, uh, um, um, it's like a, you know, in, in one direction, basically, it's, it's like a very strong electric field, like a thin film or so. So this is, uh, this is basically well known that, that once this is lifted, actually, so this is in the band base, actually, on, in the, the bands are splitted, yeah. So from one, uh, this has more than one band, actually, unfortunately, but the bands are splitted. And now you ask the questions, what are the Cooper pair, how the Cooper pairs are pairing up? And this depends, of course, on, on, on the direction of this. And uh, in the simplest version, where this is parallel, uh, this, bring, this is brings us in touch with topological people, of course, because on, uh, this is exactly what people like in topology, that you have sometimes nodes per accident, and sometimes you have never nodes, and so on, because this is exactly what happens sometimes in bulk and at the surface. Here happens at, in, in, in both times of the bulk. So you can, you can play a around with this and calculate response function and so on. You will get some surprises. But the main issue is here, there are some materials available which have this uh, superposition of singlet and triplet, which you can use in a junction, actually, right? And this is, I think, this is a, these are bulk materials. And even without ferromagnet here, just insulator, you have a nice uh, uh, coupling uh, to, to uh, the superconductor. So in, in, in a nutshell, what happens, you have this D vector, the magnitude, and, and, the, and the psi. So this is the singlet part is the triplet part, basically. And uh, so in this linear combination, we have all the uh, uh, 
uh, volume of the gen, for example, you can solve this and you see minimum of the free energy can change a lot. So I think the message is here somehow if you want to use uh, phi junctions or want to produce them, I think triplet superconductors either in this way or with this transrutinate is I think it's a good route uh, to see, uh, to make in real life these, these uh, complicated phi junctions. Now in the last uh, few minutes, uh, let me spend a little bit more, more on, the, on the interface uh, physics because this has been already measured. And um, well, maybe five minutes, I have just five minutes, so maybe I spent here on the first part. Um, well, um, let's go back to this lattice model and put this a bit more, more realistic here in real life um, and, and also put some angle into, into the game. Uh, because we don't know what happens at the interface in particular. So uh, let's solve this, this model uh, which was set up by Mario uh, Cuoco uh, almost 10 years ago, which we have used also for, for bigger junctions. And uh, you can manipulate, you can simulate roughness here, you can, can simulate uh, um, uh, uh, thickness, and, and this is basically self-consistent volume of the gen for every point, and uh, details are in many papers. Uh, let me just uh, show uh, one of the main, for me at least, personal highlight is the following in, 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 in this calculation here. So remember Yoshi's introduction where you have a, a, a superconductor next to ferromagnet. What you expect uh, in the simplest case is a, a, some kind of full differel oscillation because the Cooper pairs acquire a momentum. So this is uh, in various ways cartoon, but then you see this oscillation and this is basically the main reason for SFS uh, uh, physics. However, here is basically similar. You get oscillations here. Uh, however, you can switch them on or off uh, depending uh, on the angle. So this is also another uh, uh, smoking gun maybe whether you have triplet superconductors or not because only there you have this D vector basically. So this uh, you can work out in, in details the, the numerics and analytics basically and you can uh, uh, summarize this in, in the usual way. But it tells you basically uh, uh, this, um, the thickness uh, is again not so important. Uh, we have seen the other results in the, in the, in the beginning but finally the angle is, is more important. And the only difficult is now, difficulty now is, is, is this to measure. So Yoshi has already these interfaces, um, but uh, how to measure this? Uh, you, know, you, want to, you don't have a next superconductor here. At least maybe you need squid or so to, to uh, measure this overlap, but that's not so easy. Um, we made more predictions, uh, which finally Yoshi uh, uh, was happy to, to, to observe uh, concerning long-range proximity effect. You have seen this uh, paper we did together last year. So basically, if you calculate all the components here for different angles, uh, you see how, how, how this guy is penetrating, how these anomalous Green's function are penetrating into the ferromagnet. And uh, uh, we calculate all the components actually. Uh, and this is in the supplement of, of uh, our paper. And also, uh, if you look carefully, also on this side, uh, you see some uh, inverse proximity effect. You see some feedback on the superconducting side. It's even not, not symmetric, actually. So in simple words, what happens, you reduce the D vector, you reduce the D vector in the presence of the ferromagnet. And if you, re you reduce the D vector, uh, then the uh, condensation energy is different. So if the condensation energy is different, this we worked out in this paper, then the orbitals again matter, actually. If the condensation energy is different, then, uh, then it's Andreev's scattering processes it depend again on the orbitals. So sometimes uh, in, uh, if the interface is Px or Py, then the angle can be completely different and sometimes scattering events are important. I, this is a cartoon version of the result, strong or, or weak in the uh, interface, a ferromagnet at the interface, good or bad, because now it's a, it's a serious competition because the D vector is reduced. So somehow uh, uh, real life will tell us what's going on. So we, we included, uh, we improved many models here, interface, bulk, separately and so on. So um, we don't know uh, yet whether, whether how realistic we have to be there. And what we didn't do at the moment, we didn't uh, uh, have no interface for the D vector actually. Also D vector might have different orientation at the interface rather than the bulk. This we did not include yet, but uh, uh, Yoshi told me this is also maybe important to do. So I skipped this uh, because of, of time, but basically you can work out phase diagrams for these things, uh, what happens to the bulk and interface, and uh, w which configuration is stable and so on. Uh, there's a feedback on D, it's reduced. 
So somehow uh, we're a little bit, you know, uh, waiting for, for new insights from, from other experiments. I skip this part because it's uh, helical physics is also important, helical s stuff. Uh, just, just two minutes before chairperson stands up, um, uh, let me uh, point out a few uh, experimental remarks. So when I did this prediction uh, more than 10 years ago, I was very lucky because I was the first one, but uh, I could, no one could convince no one actually to try. Uh, even our MBE group at uh, MPI Stuttgart uh, told me this will never be possible. Yeah. This guy is now retired, uh, so <laughs> the su successor is more optimistic actually. <laughs> successor is more optimistic. On the other hand, um, this is maybe the easy part, they pointed out, to use the Swanson routinate family, the one on three compound, uh, ferromagnetism. This is maybe the easy part. However, the Swanson routinate part is, is the more difficult part. Uh, uh, if you have bulk, if you have bulk, this was done by Teva No, actually. So, so he was teaming up with uh, Yoshi and uh, uh, making this uh, uh, nice interface we have seen uh, in, in his talk and also in the introduction from, from me. So this has been done. Um, but um, yeah, then uh, we did this paper last year with this long range penetration there, with this long range, so longer, much longer than, than, than uh, the 113 interface here. Yoshi explained to you. And I think uh, uh, since Yoshi discovered this material in 94 and people were always not convinced that's really triplet because you can, find, you can find 99 experiments in favor of triplet, but if you find once and gains, you say, mm, what's going on? And a few years later, maybe uh, one looks back into this data and maybe find again, it looks like triplet. But I think uh, uh, finally with these interfaces, I think there's a big step forward made that this is really triplet physics. And uh, I hope this will also uh, be confirmed by more measurements. So basically this is also in, in the interest of Yoshi. But final slide I want to show here in the experimental part is, is the following. Uh, the, f the, f the, the, you know, the full glory of the TFT would arise if you would have thin films. So we, we, we again motivated many people, also our MBE people at Stuttgart, to, to do this. Uh, Yoshi Krockenberger did uh, a PhD with us and then went to Japan to the Kawasaki lab and continued on this. So he actually has the first paper uh, in 2010 uh, with, uh, with a thin film of Swanson Routinate. So this is a, n a different substrate here, Alzat, not STO. He has nice interfaces and he has nice uh, material and nice layer growing. And at that time, TC is a little bit lower than one Kelvin, uh, depending on the field. Now they have new data with 1.5. So for me, this is very, very um, promising, actually, that you can now uh, do heterostructures with thin films. Um, there are two remarks I, I, I should make here. Why is this so difficult and why no one uh, tried so often? I think the problem is ruthenium. So ex experts should correct me if I'm wrong, but ruthenium has a high evaporation temperature. So usually MBE machines work at 1000 Kelvin or 1500 or so, but this guy needs maybe then 2000 Kelvin to be evaporated. So now this is very, very, very uh, a hot temperature actually. And now and after we have evaporated, you have to cool down below one TC, one Kelvin or so to measure this. So you need very expensive equipment, I think, to do this. And uh, no, not too many people have this in the world. Um, this guy, uh, Krockenberger, went on to N NTT company and uh, uh, last year I visited him. Uh, he invited me to his company, but uh, this is all very secret somehow. But they are going for patents. So he showed me some, so on the screen, he showed me some results for some TFT junction. But after I asked him, you know, he should send me some data, he, showed me, he sent me contract. And before I didn't sign contract, I will never get any data from NTT company. So, and, and uh, yeah, uh, this is the current status. So somehow, um, <laughs> I'm not interested in patents, but I want to see the data. But this is not so easy. Uh, so, yeah, anyhow, so this is uh, very promising. And maybe there's also a way with the, with, the, with the bulk material in the interface. There are many ideas around to see, uh, to uh, you know, get TFT in, 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 in with bulk materials. Uh, yeah, this depends on, on your uh, f uh, personal uh, priority. So let me summarize. So I've sh I showed you my favorite junctions here, uh, uh, a comparison with, with other junctions which have not the full glory but have maybe other interesting properties, non-synodial behavior, and here also some, some uh, similar effects. 
uh, a spin current, a D-vector, misalignment is, is very, very nice. I think you can play a lot with this. You can also uh, have some uh, induced magnetism at the interface. So this is not really explored. There is uh, maybe more to it if the D-vectors are not uh, aligned. This is like multiferroics with superconductors, if you wish. Not S cross S, but D cross D, actually. So this, I think, is exciting. We have seen some fractional state, uh, which I would be happy to measure. Uh, I think someone who does this is some more prize-winning experiment. This is only possible for these D-vectors. Uh, we have seen many other things. And uh, so Yoshi mentioned, uh, mentioned the, the name Spintronics. I think it's, it's really valid to, to say with the triplet guys, you can go to really Spintronics. Um, because maybe some personal remark would be in, in, the, in the, what you call now Spintronics um, is somehow, well, not so much Tronics. Because uh, there was there was a spin current maybe, but it's decaying. It's it's not persistent. It's it, it's it's uh, has some well there's some uh, spin hall effect and it's converting and so on. But whether you want to use with it, I think you need really superconductors. You need persistent currents if you want to have a NOR gate or so. So you need this and maybe triplet is even better than singlet because of this uh, equal spin character. However, it's so difficult to make. That's the only problem. But theoretically, I think this is the material of choice for really superconducting spintronics. So, and I finished with also interface effects. I didn't show you all the results, but at least these full differential oscillations, you can switch on or off. This is maybe something to remember because this is pretty easy in theory and hopefully soon measured. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>